Hi, this is John. Several years ago, I made a video on molding a custom fiberglass nose cone. Now with the advent of 3D printing easily available, I thought I would go through and remake that nose cone using FDM 3D printing at home. Okay, I want to go through the complete process, at least the way I do it. First, we plan out the part and find any documentation we need. Then we're going to trace the outline to get it into the program. As far as the drawing program, I'm going to show Fusion 360 since it's easy to use and available free for non-commercial use. Then we revolve that cross-section to create the body of the part and then finish the 3D model by creating the shoulder and other pieces. And of course we have to slice and print the model. Hopefully the longest part will be the 3D printer working its old magic. The 3D printer I've chosen is a Prusa i3 Mark III. There are lots of good printers. I recommend choosing one that other people you know use so you can share information, especially as you're becoming an expert. And then I'll wrap the video up with some tips that I've discovered over time. As a way to save time and expense, I'm going to print the exposed area of the nose cone, but use a standard coupler tube as a shoulder. So I need to measure the ID of the coupler tube since the nose cone shoulder will actually fit inside the coupler. In this case, this is an upscale, so what I need is the cross section of the nose. In this case, the original is an Estes BNC50J. I still had the drawing that I used to create the plug for the fiberglass mold. This drawing was made by Balsa Machining Services. We can't import a PDF file, so take a screenshot of the part itself. So first thing we need to do is get our screenshot into the drawing program. We do that by creating a canvas and placing that screenshot. This will give us a reference to trace the outline. Now that we have the canvas for reference, we'll create a 2D sketch. Now that we have the profile image available as a reference, we'll use the spline tool to trace one half of the exposed part of the nose cone. As you place the points, you can see a preview of where the spline will end up and make sure that it's close enough to the profile that you want. If you don't like the way the curve matches the drawing, you can just undo the individual spline point and place it again until you get a good fit. Now that we have the half profile done, finish the spline and go up the line tool to finish the bottom and the center line. Now we're going to use Revolve to turn this profile into a solid shape. And there you have a solid from the outline that we were able to trace from a document. Now we have the profile translated into a solid. However, it's still some random size, not the size we'll ultimately need to print. I'm going to place a point at the center of the base of the solid, which we'll use for reference later. Then we'll measure the diameter of the base because we'll ultimately scale this to get it to the right size. Here's the diameter of the part as currently exists. 
Then we calculate the ratio between the size as it exists and at the size we want and use scale to increase this drawing to the ultimate size we want to print. Here I'm changing the point about which the scale will occur to the center of the base. This keeps everything aligned. It's not critical, but it just makes it easier to work with the part because everything is from this point. Now the scale is done and the part is much larger. We need to zoom out, so we'll go to the home orientation to see the whole thing. We can measure the diameter here to make sure it ended up the size that we needed. So far the exposed part is solid, but we don't want to print this giant block. So we'll use shell to make a thin part with the center hollow. Printed parts should usually be at least 2 millimeters thick, so here I'll make this 0.08 inches. Now we're going to start drawing the shoulder. So as a reference, we'll create a tangent plane at the bottom of the exposed part of the nose. Then we can switch to a side view so that it's easier to create a cylinder. Select Create Cylinder and then select the tangent plane. Select the center point reference we created earlier and drag out the diameter. One nice thing about Fusion 360 is I can enter the values directly and make them exactly what I want without fiddling with the mouse. Now let's look and see how this new shoulder looks. That's fine, although it doesn't connect to the rest of the nose. So we're going to create a third part which will bridge between the shoulder and the body. Again, we're going to create a tangent plane. Switch to the side view and draw the cylinder. This time the depth will be negative to go inside the body. Once again, whenever possible, enter dimensions exactly so you get the result you want without too much fiddling around with the mouse. And now we have the connecting piece, so the nose cone is actually a single solid. Next thing we have to do is hollow out our shoulder and connecting piece. You could do this with shell, but it's actually easier to make a cylinder and remove it from the two pieces. Make sure that the new cylinder is long enough to go through both and choose the cut operation to remove material from existing pieces. And so there we've hollowed out the shoulder and now the nose cone is functionally complete. The last thing we need to do is join these pieces together so that they will be printed as a single part. Use the combine operation and select the three pieces and it will turn them into one.
And finally, we're ready to export the part as an STL file, which is the common interchange format between drawing programs and slicers. Now that we have the STL file, we need to slice it. Slicing consists of taking the STL and producing a G-code file which gives the exact instructions to the 3D printer. This is a program called Slicer, although a slightly modified version for the Prusa printers. First thing we do is load our STL file. It's very tiny because I drew it in inches, but Slicer operates only in millimeters, so we need to scale it up. Then we need to rotate it into the orientation in which it will be printed. And then position it where you want in the center of the build area. And now you see the part we want to print. Use Slice Now to actually produce the G code. I'm using pretty much default settings here, including drawing supports. Finally, you can double check how it will look, including the supports, using the Preview tab. This is what the printer will actually produce in terms of laying down material. Note how there are supports around the edge for the lip and support in the center for the tip. Now save this G-code file, which will actually be used by the printer to lay down the filament. At this point, you'll get estimates for the amount of filament used and the printing time. I'll spare you more than a tiny bit of this printing since it took 17 hours. Then all that's left is cleaning up the part, basically removing the support material and sanding or trimming any little bits of extra plastic. Now with our part cleaned up, we have the exposed part of the nose cone and the shoulder that fits inside our coupler. And now a couple of tips that I've discovered along the way. Before printing, always let the bed cool down fully and clean it with alcohol. This helps adhesion as well as removing any dust or other foreign material. It's also important to keep the filament on the spool tight and organized. If it's loose or if it crosses itself, it might bind as the printer pulls it out, and then it will jam. Ideally, you want no slack and the filament to be lined up perfectly. Finally, printing takes a long time and uses a lot of filament, so it's worth testing. Here, I printed only the shoulder part to make sure it had a good fit with the coupler. Start with the printed part a little undersized to give you some wiggle room. You can always adjust it later. And I hope that was helpful. It's relatively easy to make your own nose cone and any shape, of course, with 3D printing. Hopefully these steps give you ideas of your own and make it easier to make a sports scale model or an upscale.